Hello everyone, it's Brian Deegan here. Sorry I can't be there with you today, but you know what's going on. So there we are. Um, I'm just going to take you through some of the basics of uh, how you plan a cycling network. Um, we'll do a bit of walking as well. And I'm going to use the place where I'm stranded at the moment, which is a town called Harpenden, which is quite near Luton, but prefers to say it's near St Albans. So uh, welcome to Harpenden. It's a commuter town in Hertfordshire, Apparently there's about 30,000 people that live here, including me. According to state agents, it has an abundance of open spaces, a semi-rural character and good connectivity. As such, it is a property hotspot for city escapees. So there you go. Um, it's a small town um, and it feeds into London. What can you do? Okay, so over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how we could transform this town into a low-traffic neighbourhood and make it genuinely... A nice place to live. It's quite nice at the moment, judging by the house prices, but it's quite car-centric. We'll see if we can do something about that to make it even better. Okay, so what is a low-traffic neighbourhood? It's somewhere where cycling is a more natural choice than driving. It's also walking as well, but I'm really going to concentrate on the cycling as that's the brief I was given. Um, you might think that's impossible, but we're going to give it a go. Let's see how we get on over the next 15 minutes. So, okay, let's start. Here's a map of Harpenden. Now, the first thing to know is that nobody is more than a five minute ride from the high street. So the question then is, why does everybody seem to drive? What evidence do I have of this? Well, let's have a look round. Um, here's one car park at Waitrose. Here's another one, Sainsbury's, and another right in the center of town. Quite a big one there. And here's another one, slightly to the left of town, and a big one at the back of the station, and a massive one at the front of the station. Oh, and this enormous one by the leisure centre. Okay, plenty of parking for quite a small town that everybody's a five-minute ride or a 15-minute walk to. But you can see what's going on here. So what is the main ask of the people of uh, Harpenden, particularly the Harpenden Society? Yep, it's more car parks. Uh, there's been a campaign to dig under the common, this beautiful common here, and do an underground car park, or the old favourite to do a multi-storey car park right here where I'm showing you, which is directly next to my house, so that would be nice for me. Okay, what's it got going for itself, Harpenham? Well, it's got three of the best schools in the country, and it's just about to add a fourth that's uh, shortly to be open. Um, I'll show you where they are here on the map. There, there, and there, and there's a new one. And that one in the middle recently won an award for the best comprehensive school in the country, St. George's. I live right next to it, so let's have a look at it. Well, uh, here's the footway that all the kids going to the best school in the country have to walk down. Not very impressive. What's it like to cycle there? Here's me riding, showing you. Make up your own mind whether you'd send your child down there. Kind of a... Almost like a, a one-way working, but you really have to yield to cars. I could tell you stories about my uh, collisions there, but yeah, don't want to depress you. So what can we do about it? Well, let's let's do some network planning. That's really what I've been asked to talk about by UDL here. So let's have a look at that. So first things first, if you're doing any network planning, uh, let's look for the barriers. So what do I mean by a barrier? Like a main road like this, for example. Let's have a look. Let's breathe this in for a second. Uh, or maybe this river. We've got the River Lee running through the town. Very nice, but also not particularly great to ride on or get over. Uh, here's the railway line, main commuter line into London. Very reasonable, 25 minutes to St Pancras. Lovely, but again, quite difficult to ride along or get past. You really have to plot your ways across these things. So these are the kind of constraints that we have to overcome. We have to get past them. We have to get over them. So there, there I think, where you should start the network planning. Highlight those and look for ways across them. So are there any existing ways of getting across? Well, there's one that I know of, and I know this town quite well after 10 years living here. There's this one here, this brand new Toucan Crossing. Uh, let's have a little look at it. It might not be the nicest thing in the world, but it gets you across the busy road. It might not look that busy from this video, but trust me, you can get cars doing 60 miles an hour down here and you can't necessarily always see them coming. So this uh, this crossing's pretty good. Uh, but that's about it. 
What about all the other barriers? How do we resolve those? How do we get across them? How do we move people from one side to the other? Otherwise, these barriers create little closed off cells, little neighborhoods where it's very hard to get in or out using anything other than a car. Uh, so let's uh, let's plot some potential new crossing points. Uh, we're looking for, for roads that line up. We're looking for places maybe away from some of the major junctions so we don't have the big uh, issues there of dealing with capacity and having to spend a couple of million getting some uh, rather big interventions done. So let's have a look at them. There's a couple of things that jump out, uh, particularly this one. Let's look at the shape of the streets there. They're fairly aligned. And what's really exciting about this layout is it looks like two crescents join. So if we were to close one arm of either of the crescents, cars can still get access and so no, no fault there. But we can put in a pretty decent walking and cycling provision. And what would that look like? Well, something like this. Excuse the quality of my visualizations, but I'm just trying to get the concepts across. So why like this? Uh, uh, why would we do it like this? What do I mean by that? Can that be done, you might be asking yourselves. Well, yeah, let's have a look at some examples. Here's a few from London that we built earlier. Uh, we got this uh, type of parallel crossing approved by the Department for Transport several years ago now. For me, they should be used everywhere. Uh, there's not many outside London, I will say, but it would revolutionise uh, Harpenden and many small, time, small towns. <clears throat> okay, sorted then. Well, not quite. We still need to connect them up, and the best way of doing that is to look for where's the quickest connection between the potential new crossing points. So here's me riding along showing you one of the most direct connections between two of the feasible crossing points. And you can see it looks all right. There's not much that we really need to do here. The actual street itself is fine. We're just uh, getting to where it's difficult. And then hopefully someone's going to build a new crossing to get across there. So leave it as it is. Carry on. Stick with uh, resolving the difficult points. Most people around here would get on fine. There might be a few few things we could do for example um side road zebras if we ever get those approved by the department for transport they could look a little something like this and uh quite good for people walking and would deter cars from zooming in and out of side roads which would be a real benefit for cyclists as well that's the sort of thing we could look at what else could we look at well we could do a bit of placemaking. We could maybe look at a few restrictions so that the neighbors are only accessible by our neighbors or people delivering to our neighbors, not by outsiders passing through, perhaps on their way to a place like Luton or even, uh, I won't even mention Batford. <laughs> anyway, passing through to areas, why are they disrupting all the neighbors down there? Wouldn't you like your road exclusively for you or your business? That's really what we're selling here. So we could stop up this road, for example, uh, putting some seating, maybe even a new ramp across the railway line so people wouldn't have to drive around. They'd have a direct connection. Um, and people in uh, wheelchairs or people who find it difficult walking up steps would then have a nice uh, step-free access into the town centre. So that's one half of town sorted if we do something like that. Also, we could uh, we could close this one up to stop industrial traffic heading onto the National Cycle Network. Uh, also, potential for a ramp there up to a nice uh, greenway path up above our heads there. If you have a little look around, um, again, that would stop a lot of traffic coming up there, the quiet residential roads, and keep them all in the industrial part of town down by the river. So, quite a simple one, and would stop a lot of that cut through traffic. It's already got a little bit of traffic calming in the area we could do a bit more all right so we're getting in there well what else should we look at well, what about the rat runs what do we mean by a rat run it's where cars are perhaps uh, avoiding a little bit of congestion on the main road that they should stay on maybe there's a signal junction that they don't like waiting for seconds at so they start hitting those uh quiet little connector roads those ones that uh ways and google maps tells you to pop down Maybe we should do something about that these days. So we could close a few of them off. Uh, here's some classic examples around Harp Harpenden. Uh, we got one here. There's another one. There's another one. And there's another one. Plenty around. But that's about it. About five rat runs and all the cars are on the main roads that we expect them to be on rather than quiet residential streets. 
So then we could do some play streets. That'd be quite nice because we've got some road closures. It's going to be quite quiet. You might let your kids play out there then. Let's, uh, let's convert it to a play street and make it formal that the kids can go out there. We could do some school streets, do some time closures in some of those areas. Um, obviously, with the schools that are in Harpenden, this would be a real boon. Okay, it's starting to get quite livable, livable now. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it's starting to get quite livable around here now. But is there anything else that we need to do? Well, I don't think we should leave all those barriers alone. Maybe we can take some of them on. Maybe it needn't be as expensive as you might think it is. So what about this road? What can we do? Well, if we were to do something on this road, it'd be a 20 minute ride to St. Albans. It'd be 30 if you're going slow. But that's, that sounds something quite worth contemplating to have a connection like that. So uh, where would we find the space? Well, look at all that hatching. Let's pull it out. Let's put some light segregation in there, some protection. Um, it's quite cheap. It's quite effective. Could look something like this. But this is also a semi-rural area. So are there any paths that we can make use of? Any greenway routes? Uh, well, yes, there's lots. But look at the surface quality on them all. And what happens when you do get to the main roads? There's nothing. There's no crossings to help you across there. So maybe we can start doing something about that. All sorts of crossings we can do now. You should be able to get a handle of where I'm going now. So we could widen the paths, resurface them, get the crossings in. All good. So that's about 20 things. Let's look at the map again of Harpenden. There's about 20 things that could completely transform the area. Talking a few million pounds could see this place come alive with active travel. It's quite a basic spend considering all the health impacts and the air quality impacts and all the benefits that we provide for the people there. So they're the basics of a, to allow a kind of car-free thinking to take place and start planning for active travel to blossom. And we need to provide spaces that kids can, can ride to school, can play out, that the air is clean, that the collisions are down. It's really not as hard as we think it is. Albeit the chances of getting this done in this area, well, who knows? People tend to think that you're taking something away if you do any kind of restrictions for cars. But for the few people that are driving down there and that are causing a nuisance, everybody else is suffering. So I like to feel the, the case is getting stronger and stronger. And just to round off, it was never really about cycling. It's always about planning for nice places to live, work and grow up in. That's really what we're selling. We're selling the, the situation that we've been in during the lockdown, where you can hear the birds singing, where the kids are out playing again, when old people are going for walks and they feel safe in the area because the cars have calmed down finally. So we need to recreate those conditions. And these are basic tools for helping you do that. So here's the overall plan for Harpenden. I suggest you look at these techniques and do it in your own area. Might be one you're working on, might be where you live, but have a little go of it. I'd suggest it's always better if you can take people along with you. So if you can do it in some kind of collaborative way, then fantastic. But start doing it and start doing it now. We need to transform it. There's easy, quick changes that can really revolutionize the way we work and the way we go about our business and the way we live in this country. That's enough about me. I hope that was enjoyable. Sorry I'm not there. See you all soon. Bye.